Hey, I know it's been a ton of videos today from me. And just to kick this thing one more time about the mark of the beast and uh, how it's not a matter of, uh, of, of justification. You really have to look at things as, as it pertains to the sin nature. People need a solution for what they are. And what they are is manifested by what they do. People commit all kinds of lack, acts of lawlessness because they are sinful. Their nature is that way. They are bent that way. And, you know, for somebody to not take the mark of the beast, think about there's half of the world population dies in the beginning of the tribulation. All those people didn't take the mark of the beast. It's before the mark of the beast even rolls out. Are they going to be able to stand before God and say, well, I didn't take it? No. They're no more justified if, as if they took it. There is nothing that justifies them based on taking the mark of the beast or not taking it. People die in the tribulation before the mark of the beast comes out. The mark of the beast is the expression of of the nature which is in man, this sin nature. It is a culmination of the nature of man's sinfulness in his uniting himself with Satan. It is absolute darkness and there is no light in it. Yes, it is dark. And just because somebody didn't take the mark of the beast does not mean that they are justified before God. It's just like somebody saying, well, I never murdered anybody. Well, people if people died without taking the mark of the beast, and they will, that doesn't make them justified. It's, I think it's, I think it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear by now. I think, I think we understand this is not, this is not a requirement for salvation. It's a manifestation of, of the sin nature and the evil. People need an answer, and the answer is the blood of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news of his sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the answer for sins committed and for the sin nature. And his remedy for the sin nature of Israel is going to be this new covenant where he will cause them to walk in his ways, and he will give them a new heart. Not a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh. And he will write his laws on their hearts and in their minds. So, Mark of the Beast can't... It's not that it... It's not that it not taking it justifies you. It's not an included package. It's the fact that if you take it, you're locked into whatever you... To your sin nature. You are locked in. There's something about it. You cannot be saved. Your mind is absolutely done. The You have rejected the blood of the Lamb. It, it really, in, in Hebrews 10, there's a really good parallel when it talks about the adversaries. Despising the covenant and trampling under the blood. I see this more applying to the tribulation and to really future Israel. Now the book of Hebrews is for us today, but the way that it's written in the parallel that it runs the new covenant, because that's mentioned and it specifically mentions him writing his laws on their hearts and in their minds, you see the mark of the beast, or you see the adversaries taking on a certain nature of despising, despising the blood of the covenant, which wherewith they were sanctified. And the picture of it is Judas. This is a warning to the Hebrews. In, in, my, in my understanding, Paul is writing this, this as a concept for the Hebrews to grab onto. That Judas was part of Israel, but despised the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. What, how was he sanctified? Because 
Israel is set apart to God for this covenant. And when Jesus presented the presented this new covenant in his blood, Judas took part in that and despised it and trampled underfoot the blood. I don't see this a verse being able to be applied to the church. I see this as tribulation Israel and dealing with this whole concept of adversaries. We don't have any part in that. We have boldness. We have boldness to approach by the blood. Now, again, understand, there is no works involved, but the sin nature takes on a certain lie that it believes. The mankind believes a certain lie. And it may be that the blood doesn't forgive. That's honestly what I think, because you see Judas in the end saying he betrayed innocent blood. Judas was in some way convinced there's some lie involved there. And I know I'm pushing this pretty far. You don't have to be convinced. These are just connections that I see. Ultimately, all in all, what, what, is to, what, what is for us to grab onto is that we have boldness to approach God by the blood of Jesus. And you cannot change your mind about believing that, you're, that the blood has cleansed you from your sins. You cannot repent of salvation. Salvation not to be repented of. That is, that's the nature of when God puts his spirit in you and seals you until the day of redemption. All right, that's a lot of information, and it was fast. So um, God bless you. Um, remember who you are in Christ. To be in Christ is to be a new creation. We're seated with Christ in heaven, heavenly places. We have an inheritance, which is, a sh which is we are sharing in the inheritance Christ has. You have been given all things. All things are yours in Christ. Okay. Amen.